And some of you, I'm sure, have been here for many years, and I appreciate it uh, very much that you uh, would come out on a day like today and, and make the effort to come here, because we, as I've been telling people off and on, uh, we should have had yesterday's weather. <laughs> so uh, normally, uh, by 9 o'clock, this place is packed, there's 25 cars outside, and we're having a little car show. Today, I'm looking at the clock, it's 9.30, nobody's here, and I'm like, you know, holy crap, my wife has spent the last two days making food, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm, I'm going to be eating hamburgers for a month. Does that mean uh, we get second? Yeah, 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 well, we always want to make sure everybody leaves happy, one way is to feed them, so uh, uh, we've learned that early on. But I did want to thank everybody today, uh, we're going to be talking about upholstery, um, and I guess I need to digress just a little bit. Uh, we we have, I, I was going to introduce everybody, I don't know where the others are, Tom, Tom's a little shy, uh, but I will say at this point in time, I don't know how many of you guys uh, run your own small businesses, but at this point in time we have our best crew that we've ever had here at Triumph Rescue. And it's taken me almost uh, uh, 17 years to do that. So um, we have we have just exceptional people here right now. Uh, we're putting out good quality work. Um, our customer base is growing. So you know we've gotten the bases covered, but it, it was pretty frustrating <laughs> to get here. But um, uh, I want to introduce uh, we have Tom. Tom does our painting and uh, body work. Brad is doing our upholstery work. Uh, and I'll tell you, that was a key. That that was a that was like a puzzle to me that was missing for a long time. That was that was a piece of the puzzle that was missing. I tried all sorts of upholsters in the area. wasn't really comfortable with any of them. And uh, so Brad Brad is a very good asset. Uh, Shane does a lot of our mechanical work. Uh, Josh does uh, British wiring for us, and uh, Ross in the back, he's, uh, he's doing a lot of work to the, uh, the, Austin, uh, the Aston Martin, a very good exceptional body work guy, and he actually has a flip side that he's a very good uh, IT guy, so I uh, scored twice with him. <laughs> now they will say that uh, for some reason I have this uh, uncanny knack of calling Brad Ross and Ross Brad. I don't know where I got it, I don't know how it started, but, you know, unless I'm really mad, it doesn't really matter, so <laughs> they, uh, they answered everything. Uh, but uh, I did want to thank everybody again for coming out. I know the weather's kind of crappy today, so uh, I have two people taking uh, videos, and I promise to watch my language, because sometimes I can be, uh, my vocabulary can be a little bit uh, uh, stretched. But, uh, <laughs> So we're, I'm going to put Brad on. He's going to come out and uh, talk about upholstery. Uh, then uh, I was going to talk about my uh, my favorite subject about fire extinguishers. Hoping everybody has one. And uh, you know we can if you have a question, please ask it. Um, if not now, maybe after lunch. You guys need to talk to somebody. Now's a good time to uh, you know ask any questions you may have. Okay. So here's Brad. Hi, right, good morning everybody. Uh, morning. Welcome morning. to Triumph Rescue. Uh, I'm Brad, I'm the upholsterer here. I've been doing this for a couple of years. Uh, and this is uh, Upholstery 101. So I know uh, a lot of you are more interested in, in how the car looks and runs and performs. But what, what I try and consider upholstery is, you know, the way you're outside of your car, you bring the page out and you're in, and that's where somebody looking at you driving on the street, right? You know, your upholstery, what you sit in, it, that's for you. That's your domicile. That's your your little little oasis. You know, they, you know, you drive it in your brand new upholstered, you know, gorgeous car, and you feel great. You know, you don't have springs jabbing you where you don't want to be jabbed, and you know. So um, here at uh, Triumph Rescue, we we you know we try and give you a full service uh, upholstery uh, service. So. Uh, what we're gonna, I'm gonna basically start off uh, by introducing uh, my sewing machine here. Uh, this is, um, this is not your typical sewing machine. Uh, this is a walking foot. It's not like your singer that you have at home that you do your drapes with. This, I, I pulled the end off here, uh, so you can see that there's heavy duty equipment. Uh, this is actually a small portable 
system, uh, but uh, there are larger, some of the larger upholstery shops. You see a long arm sewing machine that you can actually get a, uh, a door panel in there. And, and so uh, I do some custom work that way. Also, if you're building a large seat or, or whatever, and you have to get the material crammed up underneath there, it's, it's kind of hard to do. Uh, a walking foot basically means uh, your regular Singer sewing machine at home, uh, if you could imagine the bottom, there's a foot that comes up and it feeds. So when, when you load your, your material through, you know, your sewing machine, it, it, it just feeds it through that way. What this walking foot is, there's a foot that comes up from the bottom and feeds, and then there's the, the, the top arm that comes down and it basically walks together. So they both come together and pull the fabric through, then you get the stitch. So that's what's called a walking foot. So that way your top and your bottom, when they come together, they stay in line. Uh, if you, a regular sewing machine, with the bottom feet, you could run, and basically the, the top stitch can stay there, the, the top piece of material, and then the bottom, when the time you get to the end, it's all crooked, and you have wriggles, and uh, it just basically is not going to uh, give you the, the, the product that you want. Uh, our, our thread that we use also is not your, your atypical home thread. Uh, it's called the one pound test. Uh, this is a UV resistant, also it, uh, it's fairly, fairly tough. You know, you can really uh, give this a, a good pull and, and you know, it, it's not gonna tear up on you. Uh, you know, your older British cars, way back when in the 60s, 50s, you know, they, they really didn't have the, the quality of, of thread that they have today with your synthetics. So today's thread is going to stick around a little bit longer. It's going to stay tough for you. You're not going to pop the seam and think, oh, geez, now I have to get that fixed. Um, uh, we, if, if you guys want to just follow me over here, I have a, a couple different stitches that you guys might be familiar with. Um, the, the single stitch is basically, you know, your, your, your basic stitch through. You don't see any, any kind of a, a, a thread or, or stitch. Um, we have a, a, a single French seam, which is basically this kind of application. When you look and you see your seam, and then you have one side, it's a decorative stitch. It's a, it's a tougher stitch. You see that on the seats, um, primarily. Um, the double French here is when you bring both pieces of material together again, you stitch through, and then you pull both sides out. I know this is a little bit creep for some of you, but uh, this is the, your end run. This is what you get. You get a nice double stitch on both sides. It's a decorative uh, type of look. Um, well, thing is the same, pretty much the same thing. Uh, you have your two pieces of material. You get you put your welting through there, and it has about a half an inch tab on it, so it will together. But then you get this beaded look, and you know, mostly in, in the seats and uh, the coverings that go over your rear uh, wheel well, you know, TR6, TR3, whatever uh, application. But uh, all these can be made with this. This uh, single uh, Michelle sewing machine here, it's got a welting foot in there, which basically it, it takes your welting and it sews on just on the inside edge. So, you know, you have your nice bead coming out through there. So, um, this is just a little bit of a, an overview of, of, you know, how seats are assembled. Uh, even though, you know, most of you guys are, are Cruising in your vehicle, you don't really know what's in the seat. Uh, this is a, a pretty ancient. Uh, <laughs> oh, whoa! Uh, this is an ancient guy here. Uh, this is a TR4 seat, uh, also very typical with a TR6 seat. Um, you have your diaphragm in the bottom, which you most definitely need. Um, it keeps you from popping through. I've, I've already seen some seats come through without this, and you know, the customers complain that they're basically just sinking down through. Um, you know, you have your spring sides, you have some ribbon that goes in the back. Um, so, the, you know, they're, they're semi complicated, nothing like your, your you know, newer Recaro type seats that are very form fitting, but. Uh, uh, this seat would be obviously different than a TR3 seat, which is a very basic seat, but uh, you know, a lot of people don't realize what, what goes involved in a seat. Uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, parts, pieces, uh, 
and uh, it, it all has to come together. And uh, you know, it's a everything that is involved with that has to be fitted just nicely because it's it's part of you. You know, you, there's nothing worse than you have a nice cruise to Carlisle or something, but the, you know, your seat's just it's not really giving you too much comfort. So you you it's a creature comfort thing. So uh, you know, you want to you want to consider if there's a problem with your seat. If you're not if you're not happy, please bring it by. You can call us. Or whatever you'd like to do, we've already. I have put uh, boosters in, uh, in in the back here. You know, your modern car seat has some air bladders in them sometimes with a, a with with a little uh, a little a little bolster there for for your lower back that that gives you just a little bit more comfort. Uh, I've already beefed up um, some some areas that especially getting in and out your door. See this this part over here always gets smashed down because that's where you. You hit here and here in the corner. Um, if if the rest of your seat is in great shape and you're all ripped up here on the side, what we can do here at Giant Fresco is we can we can just take that corner off and replace that one corner with with a matching vinyl or or leather. So you know not necessarily you don't have to replace the whole entire seat, but just that's something that uh, you want to you want to keep uh, consistent on both sides because if you if you have your left corner here, it's all mashed, you know, you're going to be driving on the road because you're just going to be sitting like this. And uh, uh, we have, uh, many of the seats, as you know, are vinyl and leather. Uh, we have a, a, a good a leather company that we go through. Uh, they're out of upstate New York. Uh, it's called Garrett Leather. And they have, they sell a really nice product. Uh, we, we can get hides. We have different shades different colors. Also, they have different textures nowadays. Uh, you can get an ostrich skin, which you can get alligator. And basically what they do is they get a regular hide and they run it through a big dye that just Im impresses what you want, what kind of pattern you want in there. And then people say, well, where do you get ostrich skin from? And it's like, well, it's really, it's just a kennel. <laughs> and it looks like there's little parts in there. I remember doing a uh, 62 Cadillac convertible, and, and it originally had ostrich skin in it. But you know, we, we found this material, and you know, put it in, and it's you don't you don't really know you can't really tell the difference. Uh, nowadays, the, our our vinyls are becoming more and more of uh, more high tech, if you, if you will. Uh, years ago, a vinyl all you got was just a straight piece of tough vinyl that was. Uh, you know, a, a little bit, uh, just more, you know, commonplace. Uh, nowadays, uh, vinyls uh, are coming, they're very soft, they're uh, thinner and tougher. They have more stretchability to them, so you can really, uh, they'll conform better. Um, also, uh, you fold this vinyl up and you put it next to this leather, and a lot of times you really can't tell the difference. You know, uh, you have you seen like this, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there's really, it's, it's hard pressed to, to, to find where, and if you touch both of these, it's like, well, that's it, all leather. Um, many of you know, you go to buy a new car nowadays, and uh, they say, oh, leather seats, leather seats. Well, guess what? Leather is the part that you sit on. <laughs> and then the rest is vinyl. They're not gonna wrap the entire back of the seat with, with leather, because it would cost you a ton of money. Um, so. They use these vinyls now that are that match exactly to the leather. Um, let's see if we can get down the road a little bit more. Um, we get to some uh, interior uh, parts of the automobile. Um, door panels, uh, if you're going to jump into your door panels, if you have a problem, you have to rip the tears or whatever, there's uh, a couple of things you just need to, to remember. Um, I recently come across some homemade door panels that were basically somebody's paneling from their basement. <laughs> For real. And I took this apart and I said, oh, no. um, it's somebody's paneling from their basement. Now this is basically just a Luan, oh, it's basically just a Luan, a thin laminate, which, which is about the right size. But it's not going to want to bend. Sometimes we have a little bit of flexibility in the door panels. Um, and also, if there any kind of moisture gets down in there, what that you want is going to do, it's going to swell out, it's going to delaminate, and then you're, you're going to be right back to where you started from. Um, 
We have, we have a, a proper uh, application here, which is a door panel board. It's waterproof. It's uh, also, we if you is, it would like to do your own uh, at home, but what we could do is we could sell you this. Uh, we could maybe cut it for you, and then you can apply your vinyl to it if you'd like. Or also, we could do it here for you if, if, if need be. But this is the appropriate replacement panel. Uh, it's flexible. Waterproof, tough. You can screw into it. You can staple it. You can glue onto it, and it's basically going to give you a better product because, in, in the long run, you really don't want to do stuff over and over again. Yeah, you know, you know holy cow! It's just in there two years ago, and there's my wife calling. How's it going, honey? Fine. She <laughs> needs some milk and eggs before it goes. Yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll make sure I bring some. Um, okay. Um, let's see, carpeting. Uh, everybody who's, I'm sure, is dabbling carpeting. Uh, if, if you have a convertible, you, you know, sometimes you get water up underneath there. Uh, we have different uh, different samples here of some jute padding. Uh, we have, uh, this is uh, the one that we sell here. This is a, it's a thinner, a little bit more dense uh, fabric because you really don't. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm going to do this a while. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she's really pissed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing now? The <laughs> art art. Talking about jute padding. <laughs> um, this jute that we sell here, it's a little bit thinner, but yet it's nicely dense because you want to keep out road noise and you want a little bit of a, a better plush feel. Um, we have some regular uh, jute padding. It, it, some of the times you see Jute padding made out of like a horsehair kind of product, which is very just, it's messy, it, it, it's all over the place. It wants to, uh, you better take it out, you're in trouble. Yeah, I know. She'll be like, I thought you were done at nine o'clock. Um, yeah. She'll be like, who's that? Um, uh, and, and so what we Rapid like to use is, uh, what we like to use also is uh, this uh, type of jute padding, which is has a little bit of a heat shield on it. It keeps, especially for tunnels and directly underneath your feet. I know a lot of uh, a lot of the Austins like to have that. Geez, right underneath your your seat, man, you got that exhaust going through there on a hot summer day. Uh, boy, it just you, know, you feel like a pancake frying up there. But uh, this is this is a good application too. You, you can buy this. Uh, we have it here. You can you can buy it through uh, your local, even like a, a Eastwood kind of a catalog. We'll, we'll sell this for you. So this is also something that you want to just consider uh, if if you're getting in underneath in, into your carpeting here. Uh, trim around doors, or if you have a TR6, you know you have that trim going around with the rubber. There's not really too much difference in that. Uh, what I see a lot with the TR3s is this at the back of your door, right? I see a lot of this looking at where you guys just, and there you go, it's done, it's finished, woohoo! Well, you know, you can go one step further there. If you just want to come in and just pull this apart, it's just glued, get in there, get your favorite cutting utensil, give it a little slice. And now at least when, when you fold this back over, you can bring it together, you can fold it over, tuck it underneath behind, and now you have a, a nice little sealed up top. You know, there's just little little things that you can do here and there just to make your your automobile look a little bit more professional, a little bit more, and, and you know, you, there's not gonna be any dirt down there, it's not gonna start to fray apart. You know, you're not gonna get this after a while. Um, and, and then also you won't have to replace it because it's not gonna be falling all apart. Um, let's see. Uh, Glue, we can talk about some glue here. We have, uh, what we use is a uh, uh, Landau top glue. There's different types of uh, glue, uh, either painted on or it's sprayed on. It's a lighter glue and it really, you, know, you spray both sides until it gets nice and tacky and then put it together and then, and then we're, we're good to go. Um, also, there are, there are other glues that are more uh, readily available, 3M. Probably the closest you can get 
Um, if you're going to be reapplying some glue. Um, this, if, if this gets hot, if you're putting this on some jute padding up underneath your, your firewall or some carpeting, when it gets hot, it's going to want to start to peel away. So uh, there's kind of, there's not really anything out on the market now that's a really a sure bet as far as getting yourself, you know, glued up where you don't have to get jump in there again and, and do it. Um, well, you know, they've taken all the chemicals out. They have? Yeah, they've taken all the, everything that will kill you. They're trying to take out of the product. Well, that's no so fun. And, and whenever it doesn't kill you, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's the problem with glue today. It doesn't kill you, so it just doesn't it's work. Not but, you know, I think that's the whole What's this world coming to? <laughs> I know. Um, I'll try not to interrupt you. These uh, for smaller, some smaller applications. Uh, even if you want to, you know, your your son or daughter in, in you know grade school or something might have some hot glue gun. Uh, you have a little piece of trim that that's coming off, it's pulling apart, and you you know you don't have any glue or anything to paint on there. There's a little dab of hot glue in there. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll reseal up. Uh, I years back I worked at a, a a company that we they made a lot of street rods. And street rods consisted of hot glue and panel board. <laughs> That's because everything is custom made. You can't you can't buy this stuff. And 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 Velcro also, also you, know, you can't forget the Velcro. Oh, but uh, you know just be a little creative and uh, just it's what I do every day. And so this is my this is my fun. Uh, some tools of the trade I you know got a nice big heavy shears. Uh, I don't know if some of you guys have. Uh, seen these be called they're called bronco bones. They're great for shoveling some uh, if you have any kind of vinyl they need to tuck behind rubber. Also it's a plastic, it's a softer edge, so if you oops and across something you're not going to scratch into your uh, painted surface. Um, also door tools, you know if you want to get behind this is an old uh, for actually American application it pops out that clip. But what I like to use this for is getting underneath where you have the fuzzies inside in, in on your uh, the fuzzy and your your rubber swipe uh, that go on both sides of the window when you have to get up there and there's like really annoying clips in there. <laughs> oh boy, I, I invented some uh, great words for those, but I won't say it right now. But you know, you're getting down underneath and just giving a little. We yes. can edit. We can edit. We can edit. Okay. Yeah. 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 Bleep it out. Yeah. Beep. Bleep. Beep. Uh, but uh, so you know, getting underneath there, there are special tools for that uh, to get that clip up underneath. Also, if you're feeling frustrated at doing those, bring it by here. We can we can take care of that. For you. <coughs> uh, there's stuff, uh, different tucking tools uh, made by the Osborne Company. Uh, these are great, nice soft rounded edges. Eddie back there knows all about these. Eddie's a great trim man back there. Eddie, put your hand up. Everybody knows Eddie. Yeah, he's from a, he's from another company, but he's a, he's I seen some of his work. Great, great uh, upholsterer. But you know, you talking to K and T. What's that? You can plug K and T. Plug K and T. Okay, I'll plug K and T. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, good friends. Yes. Anyhow, uh, Osborne Company. Uh, if you want to go online, they have. If you want to feel adventurous and you want to get involved more in t doing interiors. Uh, you know, different tools, you're going to be able to tuck in and, and get uh, things shaped up and looking better without going through. You know, you, I don't know if everybody here is familiar with getting in there with a screwdriver, pushing something through it. Oh, oops, I didn't, you know. So, uh, different door panel clips, you know. We have some stretchers here where you just want to grab and pull, uh, you know, just, just different... Uh, Trade uh, this the uh, hog ring pliers with the hog ring. Uh, many uh, many vehicle seats are connected, and and there's bars down there. And this basically will take and shove down and grab your bar and what's underneath there, and give you that nice flush fold in. Uh, hog rings are basically it's a sharp little ring. And it's, it's called hog ring because what they used to do is they used to hook the, on the, the, the tag on the ear of a hog. Give it a squeeze and it stays there. Um, 
Now, to get these puppies off here, if you want to jump into your seat and you want to take it apart, uh, get yourself some side cutters. Get in there with a, either give them a snip or just take them and twist them and they'll pop out. Okay, and then just, just uh, discard them because you, you're not going to use this guy again. It's, it's a done deal. Uh, if you want, you, you know, you can buy little bags of hog rings, uh, some stores, uh, so that we can, we can sell you some stuff here too.